Hi folks, this video is about the Aristotelian forms. Once you've mastered the basics of the language of first order logic, then we're going to want to start doing things with it. And in order to do things with it, we'll have to translate sentences from English or arguments in English into FOL. And Aristotelian forms are one of the key tools for us to do so. There are four Aristotelian forms and they have these structures. All dogs go to heaven or all P's are Q. Some dogs go to heaven, no dogs go to heaven. Uh, some dogs don't go to heaven. What I want you to do now is pause your videos and see if you can translate each of these into FOL. Okay, that was your chance to pause your videos. To do that, you have to choose some predicates. I chose D and H for being a dog and going to heaven, but really it doesn't matter if you chose P or and Q for this exercise, because really what we're interested in is this logical structure. For example, all Ds are H, I formulated as for all X, DX, arrow, HX. This might be a bit counterintuitive and hard to remember, but because there's no if then claim in the English, but our arrow does appear in our FOL. But nonetheless, if you think about the logical commitments of this in FOL, it's really the same thing as the English all dogs go to heaven. This just says for all objects, if they're a dog, then they go to heaven, which does mean that all things that are dogs have to go to heaven, or in other words, that all dogs go to heaven. So each of these cases, each of these translations really does mean the same thing as the English once you think about its logical structure. And to give you that, to, to tell you where this is going, it's incredibly common to use the existential quantifier wide scope around a conjunction and to use the universal quantifier wide scope around an arrow. So, so these structures, if you understand these Aristotelian forms, you'll be able to translate many more um, complicated types of sentences from English into FOL. And these, if you think about mathematics and science, these are incredibly common for, uh, types of sentences that, that people in those fields need to reason with. For example, you know, uh, some dogs go to heaven is just the same as the same logical structure as saying some numbers are irrational. That's, you know, you could, you could now formulate that sentence in, into FOL. Or, you know, all electrons have a negative charge. You can now see how those kind of scientific claims can be formulated into FOL. Now, let me comment. Number three, no dogs go to heaven, I think is the least intuitive of all of these. It's the hardest one for people to remember. And let me tell you, there's actually two good ways of translating it. So you can translate it with wide scope negation or with a wide scope universal quantifier. These are both equally good translations because they are logically equivalent. And later on in the course, once we learn to do proofs with FOL and demonstrate certain equivalences, you'll be able to show that these two sentences are equivalent. For this, at this point, Whichever one makes the most sense to you, just go with that and use that translation. I'll, I'll count them as equally good. For example, you could say for any object that's a dog, it does not go to heaven, which is really the same thing as saying no dogs go to heaven. But I also find it intuitive to think about the negation wide scope by saying, if no dogs go to heaven, what that means is there cannot exist a dog that goes to heaven. And that's exactly what this says. It's not the case that there exists an X such that X is a dog and goes to heaven. Okay. so. Now that you understand those Aristotelian forms, let's see if we can do something harder. So pause your videos and see if you can translate this into FOL. You're going to have to invent some predicates for yourself. Okay, that was your last chance to pause your videos. I hope what you recognize is that this complex sentence actually is just one of those Aristotelian forms. It's the first one. This is an all P's are Q structure. It's just that the antecedent, the P part, is much more complex. Instead of saying all dogs have a certain property, it's saying all giant forklifts lifts that Pia drove have a certain property. And instead of you know, going to heaven, it's being made by caterpillar. But structurally speaking, if you understand that Aristotelian form, it's just the P part, that the antecedent that gets more messy or the consequent that gets more messy. It's still a universal quantifier wide scope around an arrow. So this is the sense in which if you master those Aristotelian forms, they will help you decode far more complicated things in English. Now, you might not have chosen the same predicates I did. So I used G for giant, F for forklift, and drove XY, or drove P X for P drove X. And I also used the name Cat for the company Caterpillar. Maybe you didn't recognize all of this logical structure. And that's okay. Um, it's, you know, maybe you didn't realize you could use a name for the company Caterpillar and make this a relation. Maybe you just chose, chose a predicate made by Caterpillar and that X has that predicate. Let me say, that's not necessarily incorrect if you didn't reveal as much logical structure as I did. But in general, what we want to do is capture all the logical structure that we need, or usually all the logical structure that's possible. 
For example, let me show you two other translations you might have used that have less logical structure. Maybe, maybe you invented a predicate GF for being a giant forklift and you didn't separate out those predicates and you kept drove as a relation. Or maybe you just made one relation, like drove a giant forklift and that and Pia, um, Pia did that for object X. Pia drove the giant forklift X. Uh, and therefore, if that's the case, then X has to be made by Caterpillar. Or maybe you just made this a prop one one property, which is uh, drove uh, giant forklift dr driven by Pia, and X has that property. Now, those translations, in some sense, might be correct, but they fail to capture all of the logical structure that this first one did. And the trick is sometimes the validity of an argument might depend upon that finer structure. And so, if your translation doesn't capture it, then you're going to be incapable of demonstrating the validity of the argument. Let me just give you one really quick example. And what I'm going to do is show you why this top translation is actually the best one, because it captures all, captures all the structure that's there. Here's an example of an inference that's valid. Let's say Pia drove a giant forklift, and all the forklifts are new. Well, of course, that entails Pia drove a new forklift. But if we translate this without enough structure, we're not going to be able to see that the validity of this argument. Like, let's say that we don't separate out giant and forklift as separate predicates. We just use GF for being a giant forklift. Well, then when we encounter forklifts down here, we need a new predicate like F. And once these are separate predicates, there's not a commonality, this inference doesn't go through. Let's say I do know there exists an object that has property GF and that Pia drove it. Well, that doesn't tell me that it has to be new because I only know that all objects that have property F uh, are new. And this is a different predicate. So what I need to do is actually translate it with a finer grain. I need to actually um, show that giant and forklift are different predicates. Notice the logical structure now that's in common between these. The F predicate is up here and the F predicate is down here. And that's what actually demonstrates the validity of this argument. Remember we said at the beginning of the quarter that validity is a structural property of an argument. And that means when we're doing translations into FOL, we need as much structure revealed in our translation as is necessary for demonstrating its validity. And here the structure depends upon, the validity depends upon the structural connection between these two predicates both being F and, and the same thing happening down here in the conclusion. So this is why you want to reveal as much structure as possible in your translations because oftentimes you need it, it's necessary. Okay, let's do one more practice translation. So pause your videos now and see if you can translate this one. Okay, that was your chance to so pause your videos. If you'd like to make it a multiple choice problem, here's a bunch of translations. Only one of these is, is best, is preferred. So see if you can figure out, if you didn't come up with your own translation, see if you can figure out which of these is best. Or if you did come up with a translation, see if any of these is similar. Okay, let's talk about the answer. You know, maybe you didn't use S for student or D for donut, but uh, I think I chose fairly, you know, you can see M is for X munched Y. M, I mean, M is for M X munched Y, and H is for being hungry. So if you translated it that way, then the, the sole correct translation is this one in blue here. Okay, thanks.